Hi, my name is Kim Flintoff. I'm the Learning Futures Advisor at Curtin University in Perth, Western Australia. And I'm coming to you not so live as my flight to the US was cancelled about 12 hours before I left uh, as part of a response to the COVID, uh, emerging COVID-19 situation. So uh, I hope this serves uh, some use and I hope I can get across uh, as much information as I anticipated uh, doing in a face-to-face -face environment. I've been told I have about six minutes and I'm probably going to go over that. But I'm going to talk to you about uh, the dimension of the Driving K-12 Innovation Report that uh, we've just released uh, on uh, learners as creators. Now, um, there's a lot of information in these slides as I skip through, so please um, feel free to pause and read the slides as you go. I'm going to jump to the main priorities. We started in 2018 with a project called the Schools Innovation Projects Initiative where we set out to try and capture what schools are actually doing in the innovation and creativity space. And uh, what emerged was 11 different project groups. One of those project groups is actually an assessment strategies project, looking at how we assess project-based work in different ways so that we can actually get uh, better evidence of learning without relying and without having to fall back to standardized testing procedures and, and, and typical sort of uh, explicit uh, instruction type approaches to learning. So this is really about creating very, very dynamic learning opportunities for, uh, for our students. Uh, there's some information there about the Learning Futures Network. Feel free to browse at your leisure. The Schools Innovation Projects Initiative, as I said, began the end of 2018. And what we've been trying to do then is to capture information and get uh, develop some professional practice reports around what schools are actually doing. So there's the uh, initial groups. Uh, there was one on extended reality, one on esports, design and making, drone technology, space science, technology and astronomy, robotics, sustainability, aviation, data analytics and computation, and uh, finally one on uh, primary production, agricultural science and farming. And all of these have a STEM dimension. All of them has a, have a very hands-on design thinking type approach to them as well. As I mentioned, the assessment strategy project uh, was taken on by Martin Cooper and uh, that's continuing today as we look to try and work out more effective ways of, uh, of evidencing learning that's occurring. Where our publication goal is to develop a, a set of a, a reports, one report on each area, um, so that schools that are embarking on this process, school leaders that want to uh, initiate transformation in the school, have some starting points that they can turn to. And we've already got the, uh, the beginnings of the reports underway. They'll, I'm guessing there'll be another year probably before they're fully finished, but we'll see how we go. A lot of this work is predicated on design thinking, and this model um, demonstrates the, the different elements that are brought into, uh, into play once you embark on a design thinking process. You remove the need for explicit content delivery by teachers, and it starts to become more of an inquiry-based project, challenge-based learning, with very, very strong applied and real-world applications. We worked with Scotch College uh, on their drone technology thing uh, uh, project as part of their STEM course. Uh, one student uh, completely reverse engineered uh, the Predator drone uh, and built his own version of it with improvements. As uh, you can see the example there. Some of his classmates decided to create a high performance racing drone for under $100 using off the shelf parts and things that they could design and create using 3D printing technologies in, uh, in their school. And then they finally actually open sourced their entire project so that other students could have fun as well. We worked with HP on their Mars Home Planet project uh, with our third year design students at the university. And there's been some really interesting outcomes of that. One student designed a, a new sport that you could play on Mars. Um, and there was also uh, this interesting project here which has been picked up by some schools who are now looking at building it into their sustainability programs and seeing can they modify, the and based on the principles of this design, can they modify and build something real on their own school campuses uh, that allow them to do food production in a sustainable way. Uh, robotics is another big area that we have a lot of work to do. Um, Tim Keeley runs our first robotics competition out of Curtin University where we work with schools and school students design and build uh, the robots. Uh, they write all the uh, control and code systems to allow them to complete the uh, assigned tasks for the challenges. And of course, uh, there is a, a na uh, the first program is a, is a huge international uh, event and, uh, and Curtin has been fairly successful, but they were increasingly um, seeing more and more schools across Western Australia and Australia more broadly uh, participating in this process. 
One of the projects I really do want to talk about is the work we've embarked with John Curtin College of the Arts uh, and the Lewin Ocean Adventure Foundation. Uh, the Lewin uh, is a sail training ship and it wanted to um, develop some more engaging ways to represent the work that they do when they go off to expos and when they go to conferences and conventions. So um, because there was some uh, existing relationships between the teachers and the education officers uh, in the organisations, uh, students were asked to, to think about how they might go about approaching uh, designing a virtual reality experience or an immersive experience uh, of being on the ship. Now some of the students at John Curtin had previously developed a 3D model of their theatre on, on their school campus. And so they already had some basic design and, and modelling skills. And so they were able to then take that and apply that to working on the ship. So this became their classroom for a while, the, the tall ship environment uh, with the ropes, the sheets, um, below decks, above decks, the fore deck, the poop deck. Um, and students and teachers, and, and the centre photo shows even shows a university academic from a, a master's level program. We actually ended up engaging master's level interns, working with the ship, working with the students, to create, sorry about that, that was my timer, I told you it'd go over time. Um, but uh, the students have started to create uh, a 3D experience of Feet on Deck. We've already released that and I'll make uh, available the link uh, on YouTube where you can access that work. Um, the, uh, the students have become uh, partners in the process of learning. They, they really have taken charge of the learning. We haven't taught them how to create VR material. We haven't taught them how to put that into the right technology. We haven't taught them how to assemble and, and, and create uh, or the, the immersive experience. They've had to learn that themselves along the way through uh, uh, being driven to, to meet uh, these sort of industry goals. Um, our next part of the project will actually be going below decks and starting to model the interiors. And this can be used for safety and training purposes. It can be used for orientation for the ship, uh, for um, participants on the voyages who uh, might be coming from more regional remote areas and can't come down just simple, for a simple orientation visit. And eventually what we're going to do is to um, engage both the, the generators and the engines and a full model of the ship, which can all be engaged with in virtual reality. The work is also being used and picked up um, by primary schools. So the work being created by high school students is also being used um, to teach uh, kids in the primary school environment. So there's this multiple layers of engagement that are starting to occur. The other thing that starts to happen too is that we start to look at different ways of sharing our knowledge. So we're, we're looking to sort of relatively high order uh, engineering and technology conferences where we can start to showcase this work. And one of the pieces of work uh, that we've started to put together uh, is um, a collaboration between all participants. So there's me, there's the teacher at the school, there's the education officer uh, on board the Lewin, and also the students, both the master's level students and the high school uh, students going into these um, you know, academic conferences uh, with rep uh, representations of our work in this, in this format. So um, I don't know whether that's given you enough of a taster. I, I had a lot more things uh, I wanted to talk about, but I've certainly run out of time. And I thank everyone. I thank Keith uh, and Sam for uh, making this opportunity available. And please feel free to use any of the contact details on the screen now to make contact with me and we'll take this conversation further. Thanks very much and enjoy the rest of the conference, folks.